Uh, today it is the uh, culinary culture part of our show. On uh, Tuesdays, we talk all astrology. We're all up in your face with astrology and spirituality. Today, we're all up in your face about food and good food. That is um, today we're gonna we're doing something new. Um, we're gonna start what's called my Foodie Five, and they're the five biggest food stories of the week. Uh, we're gonna start off that um, at the top of the hour. Uh, we'll count backwards to the number one food story. Um, I had some fun doing this this week for you. I really did. There's some stuff out there that's pretty entertaining. Um, we'll check out some local events when we get done our Foodie Five. And there's a lot this weekend, uh, including a Yucca's bus tour, which we're going on. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, man, I'm going to be like a stuffed pig this weekend. I can just feel it. <laughs> I can just feel it. Um, and then after that... We will take a break and come back with Eleni Oyster House chef Spencer Bazaar. Uh, we will talk unique and affordable recipes for the holiday table. Uh, maybe something different. Like, well, Spencer knows his oysters. Everybody in town knows that Spencer knows his oysters. Hence, that's why they call it Eleni Oyster House. But um, you know, one of the biggest chefs in the city has named uh, Eleni Oyster House one of the best neighborhood bistros, um, and that is uh, the chef at Alma. And uh, I would have to concur. I've been there a few times. And we're pretty excited. Spencer's in the house. He's going to be talking holiday delights with us. Plus, we're going to talk about uh, the spirits that make us happy. Champagnes. I have a list. Spencer's going to give uh, us some ideas. Also, some Pinot Noirs that we've taken away from Pinot Days that we're going to talk about. So we have a whole bunch of good stuff to throw at you today. And I'm just really excited to be here with you on a beautiful sunshiny day a little chilly still i'm i'm sick still and i apologize for the sniffles and the really nasally sounding voice i apologize so let's get to it the five your foodie five the five biggest food stories in the world hit it oh, that's a that's kind of i it's the wrong one i sent the wrong one in your news today <laughs> That's kind of gay in it. <laughs> I can say that, by the way. Um, yeah, no, it's okay. It's all right. Is it all right? Mm -hmm. It's all right. Okay. Um, so your foodie five, do not, this is number five, okay? And do not say that I have never given you anything because this is the biggest gift I'm going to give you right now. And don't say that the internet has never given you anything because thousands of Facebook fans have successfully wheedled Krispy Kreme into declaring today, December 12th, a donut holiday. And you know what that means for LA residents who are donut? You know what donuts are to LA? They're like cheesesteaks to Philadelphians. Okay, they're like knishes to New Yorkers. That's what donuts are to uh, Los Angelinos. So today is uh, December 12th is Krispy Kreme Day. According to Food Beast, this Thursday will be the day of the dozens at Krispy Kreme stores around the U.S. and Canada. So if you're crossing the border, if you're listening to us in uh, Montreal, you can do it too. Uh, find the, the nearest Krispy Kreme, okay, buy a dozen Glazed donuts, you will get a dozen free. So day of the dozens, and it started because what they did was they, they put a Facebook post and they said, if you share this day of the dozens thought 12,000 times, the company would offer a free dozen glazed original donuts with the purchase of a dozen on December 12th. So you know what happened, right? Yeah, it was shared 93,000 times. So run, do not walk to Krispy Kreme today. Buy a dozen get your dozen free. That's number five. That's your number five. Number four, I'm a little sick over right now. And I, I'm, literally, I'm, I'm sick. You get it? I'm just, no, but it really, it hurts my heart. The uh, Weiss Brothers Farms, have you heard about this in Wisconsin? They lost a major client. Now, I think one of their clients is DiGiorno Pizza. Um, after NBC News showed a Mercy for Animals undercover video of employees mistreating their animals. Uh, NBC News reports that the video shot by animal rights group Mercy for Animals showed the workers kicking, beating, and stabbing cows. As well, Yeah, it's pretty nasty. This is what I mean. It like hurts my heart. Um, in response, DiGiorno obviously dropped the dairy farm. Uh, they have been supplying milk to the cheese supplier. Nestle reportedly told the cheese supplier, F you, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> I just wanted to see if you're awake. 
Uh, they basically said we will not accept any cheese made with milk from the Weiss Brothers Farm. Um, the cheese supplier also cut ties with the Wisconsin farm as well. So Weiss Brothers now has said in a statement that they have terminated those two employees, that they had no knowledge of this, that the third was removed from any animal handling, and they are now cooperating with officials. That's what the statement reads. I know it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty messed up. It's pretty nasty. Uh, and it just goes to show you uh, sometimes what's going on in corporations, even evil corporations that might be doing shit. There's still other people like doing worse things. So, um, yeah, nasty. Okay, that was our number four. Number three, foodie five. Tips for Jesus is back. Has everybody heard about this? Oh, yeah. Um, so your tips for Jesus uh, that rumor, which we told you about last week, the former vice president of PayPal, Jack Selby, was the money bags guy be- behind the big tips. Actually, misnomer. Eater, the online food zine, actually got a chance to set the record straight this week with an email interview with the anonymous tipper, who thankfully is still at large. Uh, and one thing is for sure, if you read this article, it's not one guy. It, it seems to me like it's a team of people, like a group of guys, maybe college friends, um, I can see them all hot, sweaty. I'm kidding. Um, it looks like a team of uh, guys. Um, they do want their anonymity to remain intact uh, so their tipping can continue. So uh, they were asked, is there any end game to this? And they're like, nope. They're going to continue tipping through the holiday season and beyond. So, so all the waiters and waitresses across the United States are rejoicing. That was number three. Number two comes from my hometown. God, I love Philly for so many reasons, but this one uh, is pretty fantastic. So Sarah Lockhart is the uh, CEO and publisher of an online mag called Around the Mainline, aroundmainline.com in Philadelphia. Yesterday, Philadelphia Magazine ran an email that she sent to area restaurants. Did you read about this? Okay, I'm, uh, Tyler, uh, our new producer, is shaking his head. She sent an email to area restaurants in which she offered them a very, this is in quotes, air quotes, very innovative and exciting opportunity to host her family dinner at their restaurant on Christmas Eve in exchange for coverage on her website, her, uh, in exchange for Facebook posts, Instagram photos, and more. So it's unclear like which restaurants were approached with the opportunity, but at least one of them was pissed enough to uh, forward it to the magazine I could hear, I can hear Philly restaurant owners being like, what? Get your, get your offer and shove it. That's what I can hear. It's loud and clear. Um, so what do you think she's offering? Well, this is exactly what she's offering. Approximately $1,000 in PR, which she says includes two posts on their Facebook page. Two posts. Okay. Um, five Instagram photos. <laughs> Two posts, five Instagram photos, and two email uh, e-newsletter ads in their January and February issues. I don't know. Sounds pretty cheesy to me. Don't you think? Yeah. Gotta love Philly. Okay. Uh, And our number one story, probably the biggest story to emerge from 2013. Hit that drum roll, please. That was a long drum roll. (laughs) The Shira, what is it? Sriracha, Sriracha, I can't say it. Sriracha, Sriracha Apocalypse. There it is! Sriracha Apocalypse of 2013. I don't know if you guys uh, know what's going on, but uh, I'm going to give you uh, a rundown of everything. This is one of my favorite hot sauce. I have it on eggs in the morning. I have it in my foe. I have it every which way I can. I will sometimes eat it out of the bottle. I love sriracha. Um, We actually, there's an actual documentary out right now, and we have a clip from it, which we're going to play for you right now. It's kind of funny because, I mean, when it comes down to it, it's hot sauce, right? But I've become pretty obsessed with it. It's absolutely iconic, and I think it's completely unintentional, too. Three very distinct syllables. Sriracha. I just love that bold flavor. (laughs) It's yummy. Almost everyone love my product. It has this cult following. I feel very proud. 
Thank you for making the world's greatest sauce. <laughs> Most people don't know where sriracha came from. You need to go eat sriracha the way we eat sriracha. I was a little mind blown when I uh, heard the whole story behind it. Dude, just amazing story. I continue to make my good part for my fans. Until someday they don't lie, I start to make it. Okay, the sriracha jam. I want. I want the sriracha jam. That looks amazing. So you got. You met the guy in the video. Um, I actually sent. Uh, I got. I got to talk to him this week. I, I sent him an, an email, an inquiry, um, or I got to talk to one of his PR people, and they sent me um, a, a press release back, basically telling me the entire story of what happened. But basically, the department, the California California Department of Public Health has issued a 35-day freeze on shipping out the hot sauce. So you better stock up. It's a sriracha apocalypse. I said it! <laughs> sriracha apocalypse. Um, and and it, apparently, there's a big fight behind it. Now, what happened was, um, well, the health department has offered no official explanation as to why they stopped uh, Hoi Fong from shipping their so hot sauce. Already, wholesale, wholesalers and restaurants that depend on sriracha are pretty much reeling from the decision, uh, getting lots of phone calls, emails. The mandate from the department comes aimed uh, amid a, a battle between the sauce makers and the city of Irwindale, California. The city residents have complained about strong odors emanating from the factor, factory. Now, remember, this is a chili pepper, okay? Um, they're saying... Is in worst cases causing seizures, uh, minor cases irritating eyes, causing causing other ailments. In November, a Los Angeles Superior Court judge ordered a partial shutdown of the factory in response to Irwindale's claims. Hoi Fong's Foods erected a snarky banner proclaiming that they don't make tear gas here, and that pretty much cemented the deal. He's like, uh, fuck. You. <laughs> that's what he's saying he and he's like listen we're not we're making hot sauce um now let me just give you a little background in what he told me they the city of Irwindale courted him to bring his factory there they courted him gave him a great loan that included like a hundred percent interest only loan for 10 year term a balloon payment at the end my financial wizards, you know what this means. At the time, they also started to contribute to the city at two, 250 grand a year at the end of each year. They started giving back to the community. So um, now he, and you met him in the video, he's just like, all of a sudden they're starting to shut it down and not giving him a chance to respond. He's like, uh-uh. So what he did, he went out and got another loan. <laughs> he went out and got another loan, and he, and he paid back the city loan. So he has no more ties. So you know it's going to be a fight. You know it's going to be a fight. So that's the big, great big sriracha apocalypse of 2013. I'm so happy that I said it. It's so silly, but it's this little thing. And I already bought like five bottles. I'm good. I'm good. Through January, February, I'm pretty good. And I hope you guys are too. So, um, so that's our foodie five. And I'm so glad that we lived all through it to deliver all the, the good and the bad news. Sarah is with us today to talk about... Um, the Filipino event that she went to, Sarah, our intern, um, and she actually was with us all weekend long. We were at Pinot Noir Days on Saturday, and then again, um, pull the mic microphone closer, um, and then again, a Filipino fundraising event yes. on yes. Sunday. So tell me a little bit about the Filipino event. Oh, it was L.A. Loves P.I. It was an amazing relief project that uh, Stephen Fretz, the Church Key uh, restaurant, was able to contribute their restaurant and give us um, the space to help create donations for gmanetwork.com. If you haven't donated, please donate to um, all the places that were destroyed in that horrible typhoon. Right. Um, 
I have to say that the food was amazing. I don't know if it's weird to some people, but uh, Filipinos like pork belly. So there was a lot of pork belly purees of ube, and um, they had liquid nitrogen cocktails. Really? That I tried not to drink because I was working. <laughs> In our line of work, drinking, <laughs> let me just say something. Look at me. Look at me. In our line of work, drinking is not only it's okay. okay, it's encouraged. <laughs> it's encouraged. Like in Pino days. Like in Pino days. What a great segue. How nice was Hitching Post? Hitching us? Post wine, by the way, we're going to, um, when Spencer, when we get back and we talk from, to Spencer Bazaar from l and &E Oyster House, we're gonna talk about some Pinots. And one of them, there was a couple that I really, really liked mm -hmm. and I'm gonna encourage people to get. Hitching Post was one of them, Hometown. I really yes. liked that one. Um, uh, Waits Maced. Waits Maced was another one. The vanilla wine that we tried. Right. Uh, you tried, not the, me. <laughs> uh, the Oster House had an amazing Zinfandel. Mm -hmm. And Pally, Pally Wine Company, had a couple of company. really good ones. Oh, yes. Which we'll get into details when we come back from the break, but. Um, but overall, it was a lot of fun, yeah. right? Oh, and Ray Garcia wants to say hi to you because he was so happy to see that Pier Polino is there supporting the Typhoon event. Good, good. Ray Garcia, another great chef around town. I'm sure Spencer knows him. He's from Fig in Santa Monica, uh, a great restaurant. If you uh, get down to Santa Monica, please go there. It really mm. is scrumptious food. Um, all right, so thank you so much, Sarah. You're welcome. Coming up next, we have, <clears throat> we're going to talk holiday fair. We're going to talk holiday fair, holiday entertaining, more wines and champagne. I'm going to clear my throat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so loud. It's amazing. <laughs> um, Spencer Bazaar is here from Eleni Oyster House a native of Los Angeles. Spencer grew up in Altadena, California from German, French and Japanese descent. Uh, he has quite a mixture of ethnicities and it brings such amazing cuisine uh, and uh, amazing expertise to his cuisine. We're going to talk about some great things that we can bring to the table, some different and interesting dishes as well. If you don't want to do turkey, we have some great ideas Spencer is bringing to the table today. That's coming up next, plus uh, some great values on champagnes under like $40 and wines that you can bring, and people will be like, oh, man, this must have been really expensive. And you're going to be like, <laughs> but you're going to say, you know, it really wasn't expensive because we got it from Pier Polino. No, we have some great ideas for you coming up next. So stay with us right here on Pier Polino. Weather. This is Pier Polino. My name is Michelle Polino. It's Culinary Cultures on uh, Thursday and Stargazing on, on Tuesday. Spencer Bazaar is here from l &E Oyster Bar. And uh, Spencer, what's, when's your birthday? Seven. Oh, he's a Capricorn. Two days after Christmas. Yeah, nice. Capricorns make good chefs. <laughs> so Spencer is a native of L.A. He grew up in Altadena, which is right outside of Pasadena. Um, he had German, French, and Japanese descent. Uh, he discovered his interest for cooking at a young age, watching his Japanese grandmother cook. And from his mother's love of gardening. I love that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's kind of cool. Um, shortly after high school, did you know immediately that you wanted to be a chef? It's It was always an interest, but I didn't know if I wanted to pursue it as a career, per right, se. So right. um, when I made the decision, it was pretty pretty fluid. I kind of like went jumped right into it, and here I am. And yeah. here you are. You know, that's, that's just uh, the universe making way for what you're great at. I believe that in my yeah, heart and absolutely, soul. Absolutely. Um, so you, you attended Le Cordon Bleu in Pasadena, which is an amazing school. There at, he interned at the longstanding Brasserie Cafe Stella in Silver Lake. Now upon graduating, uh, you worked your way up to become executive chef. So you were there for quite some time, huh? Um, well, I was there for three years, but it, I mean, it probably, I was there for about, you're six, a fast worker. Six months before I became the chef there, and then and then yeah, so then I just kind of took over the menu, kind of took ownership of it, and nice started going to the farmers markets and creating all kinds of great re relationships with them, and, and that was it. And then how did you get to Eleni Oyster Bar? So um, I I I didn't like the confines of only cooking French food, um, and I wanted to do something else. I tried my hand in catering for a while. Um, not the biggest fan of catering. I just, I, I prefer the restaurant setting a lot more. Um, and, you know, it was all circumstance. I mean, I knew Dustin from uh, working at Cafe Stella. Um, mm -hmm. He used to work there. Then he opened up his bar, Covell. 
um, in, um, in, in Los Feliz. And uh, it was just perfect timing. He needed a chef for the oyster bar. And I, I love cooking and I love oysters. <laughs> and there, <laughs> there you have it. And uh, a lot of people around town really rave about it as being one of the best neighborhood bistros around. It's uh, located in Silver Lake. Uh, if anybody uh, in the area wants to know where it is. Yeah, and it's right next to 7-Eleven in a dentist office. Right. Dog park adjacent, if you want to use Craig's, <laughs> Craigslist terms. <laughs> That's right. I love that dog park. It's like my favorite dog park. I love that neighborhood. I have a really good friend that lives in the area. So, um, But you, um, your oysters there ha- have, ra- and I'm huge. I love me some oysters. I love them. Yeah, oh, yeah. I Especially this them. time of year. Right? Oh. This is the best time. Perfect. So let's talk about Holiday Fair. This is um, this is something now. What I really love is is today's show is, is going to be unique and special. We're not going to be talking turkey. No, no, no. We're not going to be talking turkey. That's so November. It is so November. Yeah. Uh, we are talking goose, duck. We're talking alternatives. Oyster stuffing. Uh, caviar. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about some champagnes. I did some research on uh, a little bit later. And Spencer has some great beers for your guests. Absolutely. So we have a lot in store for you today. And we're also going to be taking your questions as well. So, uh, But let's start off with the um, the main dish this year. Um, I think I, I'm, I'm a big fan of doing something alternative like a duck or a goose. Why should people do a duck or a goose? And what makes it better? Um, I mean, it, it's, I guess, it's to anyone's preference, I guess. I mean, a lot of people do like do big pork rows and that kind of thing. But I like the, the lightness and the, the, the blank canvas that you get with poultry a lot too. I mean, right. uh, if you get if you get a, a goose, you can brine it for a couple of days and you can marinate those flavors really in there and can kind of like take hold of, of what you want that to taste like. Right. Um, Turkey, I mean, turkey's great. I love, don't get me wrong, I love turkey. But, yeah. you know, um, I think uh, doing something else, doing something unique, kind of brings some new flavor to uh, mix the holiday parties up a little bit. Right. Make it more fun. I think uh, also uh, there are so many unique ways you can cook duck or goose. And, uh, you know, their meat, their meats are definitely different. It's a different kind of taste. Sure. You know, it's not, it's not you know, uh, with, with turkey you're going to get, uh, I wouldn't say blander but um you know it doesn't have that like that gaminess quality which, right which I, I i prefer a lot more you know it's uh it's especially when these when it gets cold outside you want something kind of more comforting warmer something that's heavier or something that kind of coats the lining of your coats of, of the your lining stomach. of the stomach yeah. yeah no and and duck meat for me um a duck a la orange is one of my favorite meals um uh, you know the orange just takes to that duck meat, and it's it has such an amazing intricate flavor, uh, and it's incredible. And I personally like a little bit darker meats. Yeah, sure. Yeah, me too. And Absolutely. you know they have a little bit more flavor, juicier in texture, um, and they'll go with a lot of the side dishes. Like I could you know imagine a little duck orange with uh, with some Brussels sprouts, um, some really hearty greens. Sure. Yeah, you know. Absolutely. Like that to me is a really nice pairing. Yeah, spigarello right now is 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 looking great. What is it? Spigarello. It's uh, uh that's something new. Wait, I love this kind of stuff. This is what I love. It's like uh, leafy greens um, on broccoli. It's it's a very popular Italian um, uh, vegetable, but uh, uh, it's it's great, especially with something with duck. And if you want to braise it down, you can use it like collard greens. It goes great. Nice yeah. spigarello. Is it is it is it a bitter green like uh, say broccoli? Um, uh, broccoli Rob? Um, it's it's not quite as bitter, and it has more of a Christmas. It's more, um, I guess I would equate it more like kale. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I, re- I love that idea. Or grilling it. I love gr- in the restaurant, we like to grill it and put it on uh, as like a garnish on a dish or something like that. Oh, that it's, sounds really great. It's it nice and crunchy. That like, sounds really like great. Grilled Tuscan tail. It's that same kind of ballpark. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah. Um, so I've never cooked goose. Tell me, uh, give me some ideas if I, if I wanted to cook a goose for Nice. Um, I mean, I think um, a, a nice simple brine is always really nice. A lot of orange, a lot of citrus, that kind of thing. Let's Some, talk about a brine. Let's let's explain to people, you know, how you brine. Sure. Um, I mean, it's it's a, a ratio of water and salt. You want to make it. I always think of like salty like the ocean. So right. you want to make it salty like the ocean, and then you can put whatever flavors you want. If you wanted to make it more holiday, you could do some anise, some clove, some orange, oh, and that kind of thing. some anise or some cloves would be a, a tremendous. And you put that in your brine. Yeah, you, you let it sit in there, and you got to make sure you put a lot of sugar in it too. Um, right. 
just so the, the skin gets nice and crispy and sweet and ev- everybody likes sweet poultry. I mean, that's that's, that's the best. Hello. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so you, you let it brine and then uh, and then roast it, you know, um, or if you have uh, a rotisserie on your grill outside, that's great, too. Um, make some potatoes, let all the goose fat drip on the potatoes. And oh, man. That sounds really don't nice. Don't throw away the giblets or or the livers or anything like that. No. Great gravy. Oh my gosh! And you I, have to make great chicken stock. I mean, I think I think uh, that is the fundamental thing with holiday f- cooking is great stock just on the stove, ready to go in anything. Right. You yeah. can throw it on anything. Stuffing, gravy, whatever you want. What kind of goose? Uh, now let's let, let's talk about the 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 geese. <laughs> yeah. The um, what what do I get? Like if I this is new for me, maybe I want to do a goose this year. Sure. Uh, what do I get? Like what kind and and like. Um, there's I mean, there's a lot of free range organic style gooses that you can. I think Whole Foods does a pretty good job at sourcing them. Um, you're not going to be able to find it at like Vons or anything like that. You're going to have to probably go. Uh, maybe I'd always want to go organic Bristol anyway. Bristol Farms or um, I'm sure. Um, Bristol Farms is great. Yeah, yeah, and, and uh, or whole, yeah, Whole Foods I'd probably be your best bet. Yeah, I I really love the idea of of possibly doing a goose this year. That would be f- that would be really fantastic. Yeah, and, and it blows people away too. It's it, like, it does. Like, oh right? my god, you cooked a goose? Like, are you <laughs> kidding me? You know? yeah. yeah, like uh, I did cook a goose. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the flavors of a goose because I've never actually I don't think I've had goose before. Is it similar to duck? It's yeah. It's I think I I would say it's in between a duck and kind of uh, maybe like a quail. Um, it's not as like lean as turkey. And it's not as fatty as duck either. Um, but it still has like a nice texture to it. It's mm. not um, dry by any means, well, unless you cook it wrong. But. Yeah, <laughs> or don't brine it. Or don't brine. Brine, the brine. goose. Brine the goose. <laughs> brine the goose. Um, so that sounds great. I I'm really excited about that idea, and I'm excited about the, uh, a goose as as a different alternative. I also have done some Cornish game hens as well. Sure. Yeah. Um, which are a smaller bird. Uh, for a smaller audience, so sure. I've done a couple, and people have really liked that. Um, it, it kind of, ta- you know, I mean, it's it's similar in taste, I think, to turkey. I think a little bit, um, but really yummy. Yeah, absolutely, and it, yeah, it's all depending on the crowd that you want to entertain too. I mean, I wouldn't say a whole goose for four people, <laughs> unless I mean, I mean, I, I could probably get down on half a goose. <laughs> Um, we have our entire chat room salivating at this point, and I apologize. Um, <laughs> side dishes. We want to get to side dishes, too. Um, but um, side dishes, caviar, and champagne. Side dishes. Let's talk about stuffing before we go to break. Stuffing. Sure. Um, obviously, l and Oyster Bar. I think you're going to rem- recommend the oyster stuffing. We do not have an oyster stuffing now, but I definitely recommend, if you're going to make a goose, put some oyster stuffing on the bottom. Really? Because... Uh, it's it, this time of year. The oysters are so sweet and so just beautiful right now. And then chestnuts are coming in. Um, Would you say it's the best time of year to eat an oyster right now? Um, yeah, I mean, there's. I would say right now, and then probably a little bit after the frost kind of settles out on the East Coast. Uh-huh. Um, right now, they're just fattening up for winter time, so they have oh, nice, sweet, plump. Juicy, firm meats. They're 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 beautiful right now. I'm going. I'm going over there right now. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. It's just so an oyster stuffing with a with a duck. You're saying, I think that sounds really fantastic. Or a goose, duck yeah. or a goose with the oyster stuffing. Duck, duck, goose. Duck, duck, goose. Um, any other thoughts on side dishes this year? I I loved your spir- spirulina. Is that what you yeah, know? Yeah, um, spigarello. Sp- spigarello. I'm talking about the wheat. You're talking yeah. about the. <laughs> 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 so uh, spigarella. Uh, I mean, gratins are awesome this time of year. Um, gratins, like a sweet potato gratin would be great. Yes. Um, um, and don't forget mold wines and spiked ciders and all kinds of good boozy treats. Right, you have some some ideas uh, on some beers as well um, and some ciders. Are you a big fan of ciders? Yeah, I lo- yeah, I love ciders. Um, we actually carry a, a great one at L and E, and it's made of ash tree leaves. It's not ash of, tree leaves. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's it's crazy, but it's 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 out of control good. Um, but um, this time of year, I like I like darker beers. I like stouts. I like that kind of cozy warmth, um, and um, especially oyster stouts. And I'll, oyster stouts. Oyster stouts are it's a it's a kind of beer that has a very low alcohol level, but they use oyster shells to um, give it some calcium and some crispness to it. So it's a really light tasting kind of stout. Um, 
but it goes great during the winter time. It goes great with all kinds of food. Um, the Porterhouse Brewing Company makes a good one. I'm totally writing this in the in the chat room right now. Oyster stouts. Oyster I stouts. freaking love that. Yeah. So they use the shells to uh, calcify the beer in sure. a sense. Sure. Yeah. So like uh, in the um, I think the bittering process of the brewing, when they add the last addition of hops, they'll also add in oyster shells. Um, and we actually gave Mark from Craftsman Beer in, in, in uh, Pasadena uh -huh. some oyster shells, and uh -huh. he made an unbelievable oyster stout. Really? Yeah. And it's, it's super low alcohol. You can drink, you can drink, like drink a ton all, of them. all night long. All night long. All night long. This is what I love. Yeah. <laughs> no, that sounds really amazing. And actually, did you just post some in the – oh, I love you. You're so great. Uh, you can post uh, – there's a link in the chat room right now if uh, if you're online listening. If you're in your car, I apologize, but you can get it later. Um, that sounds really amazing. I uh, also have some ideas about some champagnes and some caviar and some pinot when we get back. But we need to take a break to say hi to our sponsors. <laughs> we'll be right back. We are experts at video production. We have crews in over 100 cities and the finest editors in the world. <laughs> It's fun to create your videos, and that's what we love doing. We're good at that. But the most important thing is how do you use those videos? How do you leverage your video investment? We provide all the platforms to do that. Website design, social media, SEO, PR, and television. And all of those components do a dance that work in tandem with each other for a comprehensive marketing campaign that really helps grow your business. The world is changing, and so is our political system. One person that is taking the lead and is ensuring that this change is using the principles of nonviolence to birth a new American politics is author, spiritual leader, and speaker, Marianne Williamson. She'll be here to talk about why she's running for Congress and what she sees as the new American political landscape. I have no doubt it will be compelling talk. Plus, we'll take your questions in the chat room and on the phone lines. Be sure to join us for a very special Pure Polino at 11 Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, exclusively live on ubnradio.com. Jenna from Create Your Life with Jenna Edwards every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time here at UVNRadio.com. Wishing you the most amazing holiday season from all of us at the Create with Jenna family. And may your new year be productive and positive. Looking for that special, unique gift this holiday season? Is someone you know changing careers, looking for love, wanting to start a family, or maybe even having health challenges? Astrology reports are fun and they keep on giving with insights for the entire year ahead while giving great direction and even opening up the door to new paths to follow. Check out purepolino.com to order yours today. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas everywhere you go. Take a look. And welcome back. This is Pierre Polino. My name is Michelle Polino. And with us today, Spencer Bazaar from Eleni Oyster Bar. We are talking holiday fare, but unique and different from your turkeys and your regular stuffings. Not your grandma's holiday. Not fare. your grandma's holiday fare. That's fantastic, Spencer. Um, we learned. I learned a, a couple of great things already, which I love. I love unique takeaways, and um, I think this. Um, the vegetable that's um, I gotta write Spigarello. It. Spigarello. I'm so excited to try it now. It's all over the farmers markets right now. Ah, uh, it's just that and persimmon. It's just what? leaves that grow on broccoli that are gonna sell in the broccoli, and they're like, let's sell the leaves too. That's awesome. Yeah, it's unique what we can do. <laughs> like, and I'm sure that's how you create your your menu. I think it's sure. It's, it's interesting. You it's say, more meandering around the farmers market, seeing what's available, and right. you know, talking to people and. 
It's such a creative science, yeah. isn't it? And I have uh, my my great sous chef. Uh, I mean, Chef de Cuisine Peter Lemos too. He's he's with me, and we just you go to town. Yeah, we just, you just go to town. Yeah, we just start getting ideas and just blurting things out, and then things kind of fall together. What are, What are some of your favorite things? I know I'm going off on a tangent before we get to the alcohol and the caviar. But what are your favorite things on the menu right now that you've created? Um, I I really love. Um, we have a steelhead salmon on right now. Um, really love that dish. Um, it has the spigarello on it. It has um, spaghetti squash, um, harissa, and some sumac cream, which is really nice. Hold on, slow down. Harissa. Uh, let's, let's yeah. <laughs> start with the harissa. It's like a, a, a Moroccan, North African chili paste. Um, okay. And. Um, yeah, so that it, there's that. It's kind of spicy. The cream's a little bit sweet. Has some sumac in it, and nice. it kind of just everything kind of blends together. And I love spaghetti squash this time of year. No, oh, that's another one. Yeah, that's um, really great. Yeah, fantastic this time of year. Um, we'll be able to do a whole bronzino, which is really nice. I love me and bronzino. That's my favorite fish. Beyond like, it's just amazing. It's so clean, yes, sweet. It it's, is. It's it's fantastic. Yeah, yes. It's, uh, it's definitely one of my favorite fish to Absolutely. go out and eat because yeah, it is. It's a very clean fish. And you can when you you can spice it gently and it just picks it up and you're like, "Wow." Yeah. That's that's every time I go out and get it, it's it's been a favorite. Um any other favorites before we get onto the caviar? The oysters. Yeah. Oysters are my favorite. Come yeah, me too. come eat oysters. I will. I'm <laughs> I'm I'm will. I you don't have to say it to me twice. And, and everybody in the chat room's coming with me. Um, so I read an amazing article this week, Thomas Keller, chef Thomas Keller from the French laundry. And if, if anybody doesn't know, uh, just Google him. Uh, he's one of the most famous restaurants in the world. It's a five star Michelin yeah. restaurant. Any food magazine you'll see. Right. TK himself. Right. Yeah. Um, so he, what he did is he wrote an article this week about, um, doing something which Spencer and I are talking about uh, doing something different this year, unique for your guests, something that they'll go uh, away saying, I can't, you know, I can't believe she made that or got that or uh, and caviar is one of them. People think of it as a very expensive, uh, hard to get item. Uh, but what Thomas Keller does in this article is he breaks it down from least expensive to most expensive. Um, and he talks about one of the most inexpensive but delicious caviars is Hackleback. It's uh, it's like Hasselhoff. It's like what's that guy's name from uh, Hasselhoff? Hasselhoff, <laughs> Hackleback caviar. He says it's delicious, affordable, and easily obtained. He likes to serve it with avocados and Melba, uh, Melba toast, and he he says it offers an interesting contrast of textures, and he, you get that firm saline pop of the caviar, and then the creamy avocado on the back end, and it sounds really amazing. Um, he also talks about obviously. Uh, California white sturgeon caviar, but I think that's a, a little bit like it starts to get expensive when you get into yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a paddlefish caviars that are a little bit cheaper. And he talks about that as well. He does. And you know, I think uh, the U.S. is doing a great job of trying to farm raise and um, sustainably source all of their caviar. Right. Um, I've I haven't seen l a lot of Russian caviar come in in a long time, and I think that's a great thing. Yeah. So uh, we will post this article on uh, facebook.com forward slash pure polino. As well as on our newsletter, by the way, if you want to uh, sign up for our newsletter, go to purepolino.com. We will have this article and more of today's shows and recipes all in the newsletter and, of course, on facebook.com. Uh, and then, of course, he gets into the glory of Ocetra caviar, Ooh, yes. which is the very expensive yes. uh, stuff. So, uh, But this article is great. It goes from uh, inexpensive and still good, and you can still wow your guests by just adding um, some textures, like some, some nice avocado to it, and, uh, and really wow the guests with it. And yeah. I think it'll be fun and something that you can take away. Uh, you know, imagine uh, serving up goose with a little oyster stuffing and some caviar. People will be like, what? Mind's blown. Mind's blown. Absolutely. <laughs> so let's talk about, um, uh, we were talking before the break, oyster beers, which I really, I, I want to try now, the oyster stouts. Yeah, um, they're fantastic. They're, yeah. They're absolutely great. Any others that you have in mind for um, Holiday Fair? Yeah. Um, uh Castle Lane, Beer to Guard, Blonde Beer to Guard. Um, it's a great beer. You can probably find it at Whole Foods um, or uh, like Pac Captain Cork around town. That mm. Those kind of places, a lot of places that have a lot of beer. Great food beer goes with goes with anything. Um, 
Cremant de Lemieux is a great sparkling wine. Yeah. It's a sparkling rosé. Um, that's fantastic this it's time of year. Actually, I have that pulled up. Oh, and you uh, Honestly, you guys, I'm a big fan of Veuve uh, Clucot champagne, uh, and that'll run you about 40 to $50. But the Cremant de Lemieux, about 15 bucks. Yep, it's and perfect. It's, it's the same. It really is. It's really fantastic. It's a great, great champagne, sparkling wine that you will... Uh, that you'll spend half the money for, and everybody's going to rave over. Absolutely, and and everyone loves it too. I mean, my my mom, my wife, my sister. I mean, like that's all they want to drink. Yeah, is Cremant de Lemieux. H- hello, yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't? I no, honestly, no. You grew up in L.A. I grew up in Philadelphia. I did not understand the champagne culture until I got here, and it's sure. it's definitely. Champagne is a way uh, everybody drinks champagne out here. I was like, why? Yeah, what, who's for? <laughs> <laughs> and that was the fill you me like why <laughs> i mean isn't it isn't expensive but when i started to find out and, and do my research i found that we can have really great champagnes for a fair uh decent price yeah it's all there's all kinds of bubbly out there and it's there's some really good ones there's some really bad ones but you know uh i think in that 15 dollar range cremante lemieux is great um yep. muscadets are great with seafood muscadets are also my backup as well muscadets and proseccos mm-hmm. um it can really get uh, a couple of really good ones, um, and, and they and they again go great with oysters, seafood. You have to have that little. I love a muscadet with a, a yummy oyster. Oh, absolutely! That's like my favorite. Has some nice acidity. It kind of right. cuts through the fat of the oyster this time of year. It's God, great. life is good. Um, a couple of wines that I wanted to talk about um, from my Pinot Noir days. Pally House has uh, several Pinots that I really really liked. The Hitching Post wine, the hometown wine from Hitching Post, was excellent. The Osterhaus Zinfandel was amazing. And Osterhaus also has a Sauvignon Blanc that I thought was really yummy. Pears and grapefruits um, on the nose and a really dry finish. Um, Again, it would go great with an oyster stuffing um, or a duck. Um, A fantastic pairing. Sure. So um, we have, okay. Um, any other thoughts before we get into our our uh, wrap up? We only have three minutes to go. It's crazy. It always goes so fast. Blue by no. Thanks, thanks for having me. Oh, it's been fantastic, Spencer. Thank you so much. And um, so, what are you cooking? I'm doing goose. You're I'm doing, doing goose. I'm doing oyster stuffing. I'm doing Brussels sprouts. I'm nice. probably doing a gratin. Um, I'm doing Christmas dinner as uh, always. As always, your <laughs> wife doesn't cook. Uh, she, she does. She, no, she, yeah, she, yeah, she, she's my sous chef for sure. Okay, no, she loves to cook too. You have, cu- you have kids? No. Okay, I have a dog. You have that's, a dog. That's that's enough. What kind of dog? <laughs> uh, he is a German Shepherd Border Collie mix. Oh wow, yeah. he's intense. He's intense. Yeah. His name is Murphy. He's he's <laughs> he's, a, he's a demon sometimes. <laughs> I have two Jack Russells, so we we can talk about demons all day <laughs> long. Long. Um, so I have two minutes, but I just want to say, Spencer, thank you so much for being here today and taking the time out. I really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Eleni Oyster Bar in Silver Lake. Get there. I'm going there right now to have some oysters. I mean it. I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm done. This was, this was, this, as soon as I start talking about them, I'm done. This weekend, we have several events happening. Uh, I want to let you know about, first up, for my friends in Philly, Avance opened up this weekend. Justin Bogles, a head chef. He's from Maniunk. Uh, he is partnered with my friend, Christopher Scarduzio who owned a couple of restaurants in Philadelphia and who's also partners with uh, uh, Le Bec Finn, uh, Georges Perrier. Avant's opened up in the former Le Bec Finn place, so check it out. It's, got, it's opening up Friday night. Please tell them Pierre Polino sent you. I know they will hook you up. Also, we have several events happening here in L.A. I cannot wait for this. Yuka's Secret Foodie Bus Tour from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. I'm going there. I want to see you there. Yuka's Eats L.A. Dot brown paper tickets dot com. I freaking love that. Yuka's Eats L.A. Dot brown paper tickets dot com. Uh, also, Sunday, Taste of Tamales Food Festival. If we didn't, if we didn't eat enough, we're going to eat more tamales. This is the time to eat tamales. The Taste of Tamales Food Festival is in downtown L.A. You can check it out at LAFoodFestivals.com. On Tuesday, Lucy's El Adobe presents a celebration of food and love supporting St. Vincent's Meals on Wheels. We'll talk about it more on Tuesday. That's going to be a great event. It's going to be all day. And as soon as I can find the place, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> it's, uh, let's see, Tuesday, December 17th from 1 to 5 p.m., Uh, We can meet Carla Lamley. Now, yes, she's the namesake. She's the star of the 1925 silent film Phantom of the Opera with Lon Chaney. She is 104 years old, and she has been receiving meals from 
uh, St. Vincent's Meals on Wheels for 24 years. So we're there to celebrate her life. Can you, oh, yeah. Hit that down. So we got to go. Uh, have a great weekend. Sign up for Pure Polino newsletter for discounts, recipes, our weekly scopes. More at purepolino.com. Join us on Tuesday as we welcome Marianne Williamson to the show. Thursday, it's Christmas Southern style. And again, I'm going to leave you with a quote from Orson Welles. Ask not what you can do for your country. Ask what's for lunch. Love you guys. Let's break bread together soon. Ciao.